Every single jungle class has a different playstyle, a different optimization, a different way to approach the role. And so in this video, I want to compare and contrast all of the jungle classes that we have, as well as compare their presence within the role. And in doing so, you can best identify which class is better for your playstyle and thereby choose your best junglers for you to play in your champion pool for Season 13. All of that and more coming up after a message from Rost. Hello, have you ever noticed how when you get Ocean Soul, the map is hairy? To me, nothing makes me happier than seeing the fire soul. All grass is torched, the surfaces are smooth, and I can eat through everything with such ease. Ross likes the feel. Well, the good news is Manscaped is the only option for you to feel the same way. Keep yourself hygienic and clean with the best products made from better materials than the orbs that gave me form. This Christmas, we have the new Performance Package by Manscaped, which possesses the Lomo 4.0 Body Trimmer, which possesses the pathing precision that rivals the best junglers, and it's how Vakayu himself learned the value of a close shave, because it wasn't his face. For those without the power to grow such own luscious facial hair, the Body Trimmer can be used from head to toe so that you may look like a boiled egg. And in the pursuit of smooth, the Weed Whacker Nose and Ear Hair Trimmer is now a part of the package. Santa Ross is generous. With its 360 rotary blades and same skin safe technology from the trimmer, plus the ultra smooth care package, Manscaped is for the entire body, mind, and dragon soul. Stuff your stockings with the Crop Preserver and Crop Reviver. You can get all of this for 20% off plus two free gifts. How generous. Click the link in the description below and use code for Caillou at manscaped.com. Right, I figured we should probably begin with the assassins because they are the flashy ones, they are the ones that everyone loves, and the ones that ADCs hate. But as you can see, the assassins only have 10 out of 52 presents. Now, in terms of how I went about classifying these champions, as most champions have two roles that Riot sort of puts them into. If they are basically split 50-50, I put them in both roles for the count. If they were really predominantly one over the other, then I just went with the dominant one. As such, for example, Elise is a mage, but at the same time operates very much like an assassin. Once she hits the cocoon, if she's fed, you will die. And assassins love aggressive flexi clears, red raptors grump, but they also love quadrant into invades, quadrant into gangs. They can fall clear, although you Evelyn, Rengar, and Kane are a bit of an exception to to this list, you want actionable game plans to get rolling ASAP. If you die once or twice going for a dive or an invade, but you get two, three, four, five kills from it, it is 100% worth. And that's why we love Futures Market, just to get the serrated Dirk spikes, the lethality spikes, the chosen aggressive mythic into the ghost blade, into the Cyrilla's grudge. All of those things need to be bought as soon as possible because we have short damage windows with this class. Lots of mobility, lots of snowball. You want to live in the enemy jungle. You want to really make sure they don't get to play the game. You live in their jungle and you feast off of their core. Forbes. Yes, we would love to gank lane gangs using our ultimate spikes, crucial, huge ultimate spikes on all of these champions, except for Elise. The goal is to get around the map as fast as possible to be in those skirmishes, to punish people who have bad positioning, to use your mobility to further your snowball. Now, when you're behind, you can definitely still eventually get your itemization and then, you know, one shot an ADC, but the fighters and the tanks and the mages with Zhonya's and also a lot of damage can CC you, can stop you from getting that damage off. And because your damage isn't over the top now, and basically you're only one shotting Zorakas and maybe the odd ADC, you're not really going to have the ability to solo carry the game. So yes, you can navigate and play from behind and farm and scale and split and eventually get a lead in lower ELO games. But the problem is they are not 5v5 team fighters in the classical sense. Can they? Sure. Is your positioning important? Fundamental. But as you know, death ball comps can become very, very difficult to handle. And as such, it's better just to snowball over the early game with a good game plan, good aggressive pathing, and use some ability such that the enemy can never 5v5 because it's not the best optimization for the class. So if you like all of that, then by all means, go pick an assassin, but they are definitely skilled pigs. No one in low elo should be picking an assassin, and I stick by this, maybe with the exception of a blue cane, but in concept, this is not the strong suit of that elo, and it's better set to play something else like perhaps a fighter. Whereas assassins can be used for your mid to high elo, obviously, the fighters can be used everywhere. And you know, we have decent mobility, obviously, to strong mobility on certain champions, very strong early games, strong mid games, and a lot of them do have a noticeable drop off in the late game. But things like Gwen and Camille, and yes, they're both fighters, can be very, very potent late game, shall we say, and just leave it at that. Otherwise, I'm going to go on a rant about how degenerate those champions kits are. The point is, with that trail off and that strong early game and mid game, is that you have sustained fighters built for skirmishing, built for 3v3s and 5v5s. They're not the best 5v5 is always, depending on the specific fighter you choose, but all of them love to skirmish and obviously fight. Now, when they're ahead, they have the burst. When they're behind, they have the tankiness. And you can vice versa and versa vice at that as well. That's because they're sort of the masters of everything. When they're super far ahead, they're act as assassins. And when they're really far behind and building super safe and maybe a bit tanky, 
they become those pseudo tanks, don't they? Now, they do provide a lot of utility with their slows and CC and that skirmishing win behind, obviously, but the snowball is good. The snowball is what we want. The more damage we have, the more we can obliterate anybody on the enemy team. The more damage we have, the more we can then focus on tankier itemization so that we can still kill them, but then not die. You want to control the rivers in the lanes. You are primarily looking for dives, 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 skirmishes, dives. You want to gank. You want to annoy laners. Yes, you can invade enemy jungles and do that as well. But if you're not using your lead all over the map as much as possible, you are not diving, you are not counter ganking, you are not disengaging, you are not doing your job. And if you're getting a bit flustered and saying, wow, that's a lot, you know, we have to think about a lot. Yes, fighters are basically good at everything and as such, you have to do a little bit of everything. There are some amazing team fighters, others less so, but they're better at split pushing. All fighters have a strong 1v1 and can do it all. Remember with your clears, yes, you can full clear on these champions like a Hecarim and Loop, play around your ultimate and so on. But eventually you have to realize you are not something that's going to AFK farm and scale. You need to make sure you're farming and getting strong sure on those champions, but you're still looking to use your ult and get in those fights. And as you can see, because of this, most junglers our fight is because it allows us to control the map with a lot more ease than other more subclasses shall we say of the jungle role that being said i do think we have way too many fighters and once i finish this video i hope you can see that this merits to each of the classes and I hope riot considers designing a few more mages or marksmen or tanks for the jungle role and on the note of tanks yes if you love to have cc for years if you love being unkillable and still doing a little bit of damage but not the best 1v1 potential such as a fighter then tanks are for you you will not farm as well as fighters you will not farm and be as mobile as as assassins and yes fighters can and should peel as much as possible and yes they can engage also but a tank is the primary shot caller for engage for disengage and it's the most important role in terms of target swapping in fights if you engage and then need to peel you have to do so you are the team fight gods and the team fight controllers but not everybody understands that and thus you are weaker early obviously you've got things like nunu that can parole the rivers as well as the ramus but they are a bit more exception to the rule although when there's only nine of them i mean is there a rule but when I say weaker early, I don't mean that the champion is useless in the early game. I just mean compared to other champions and niches from the fighter class, for example, they might not be able to win those 1v1s, but your ganks might be absolutely potent in the early game. So you're a strong early game ganger, but not a strong early game fighter. And as such, you are looking for avoidance in your early pathing against said matchups where you don't win, where you could be invaded, and you just want to be ganking lanes. Control your camps to a reasonable degree, use good warding for tracking, do that equal and opposite counter jungling when you can, look for a dive, but you will not maintain farming tempo at all especially versus a lot of assassins mages and fighters and thus you should not try to become them play to the strengths of the highly reliable gangs the solid and respectable clears play around your cc and ultimate cooldowns and with this pressure that you exert in lanes with how fed you can get you might be able to 1v1 certain people but the whole point is then use that pressure to gain objectives kill conversion ratio and obviously all of this is in the name of dominating easy team fights because you have a lead and now kind of do damage and your teammates are safe because you can peel them from anything the enemy has so yes you do have to be present yes you have to have good engages and most tanks have terrible engages you engage three lightyears away from your team and complain when they die to the ringer well why didn't you engage and then peel or why didn't you just be patient folks appealing and then counter engage such is the responsibility of the tonk next up we have mages and there are not a lot of jungle mages you could classify certain other champions as mages for example your silas and your gwen but i totally do not believe that they are mages whatsoever they play much more like bruiser fighters that have sustained fighting exemplary nature giga stongers or whatever the hell my brain wanted to say there because let's face it gwen and silas come on they're not mages i mean how can you compare those two to a karthus or karthus Talia, Lily, and Fiddlesticks. You cannot. And obviously, Nidley is a bit of a weird one because she is kind of like a fighter, but she's also got that mage component. At least it's got the assassin and the mage component like Evelyn. So in terms of pure mages, we really don't have a lot. And yes, I do not include Diana whatsoever. She is an AP fighter through and through and an assassin technically in this role here with your prototypical classic mage that you think about in the mid lane in the bot lane and these ones in the jungle is that they have high high scaling without a doubt in the older game and without being fed they can be hugely weak in 1v1s they have low mobility relatively except for lilia who is kind of fast but of course chain cc will do the job and you can get assassinated by your talents and rangos when you don't have zonias when you don't position well and thus positioning is the most important thing about these champions with your clears skirmishes team fights the positioning of a mage in all of these scenarios as well as how they just handle themselves and making sure they can get their damage off with their cooldowns this is the measurement of a successful mage all of them can clear really fast and efficiently except for elise and you want to use your ultimate spikes except for elise maybe she's just a pure assassin but she does have the mage component so we'll leave her here counter gangs through smart tracking everything about a mage is measured controlled and looking to get into late game form as soon as possible and that's because people confuse late game with late game if you happen to be you 
Inno, a Karthus, and suddenly you get five kills and now you're two levels up. You've just brought your late game from 25 minutes to 15. What is anyone going to do 1v1 against a Karthus with, say, an Exhaust and all of this itemization advantage? Nothing. So snowballing and being a snowballing jungler are not the same thing. The difference between a mage and an assassin, for example, is the assassin knows if they don't snowball, it can be kind of difficult for them to get back into the game. Whereas a mage, we're going to scale and scale and use smart tracking and farm and hold waves and do some counter gankings, use our big ultimates, and eventually people will die. But again, you do have that weakness. You're a mobile. You can be killed. It can be very, very difficult for a mage against certain team comps. So you have to play it intelligently and ensure your itemization as well as your positioning is exemplary. And with all of this, when you're talking about making sure you can carry games, the team fighting is determined by pilot skill issue. It's where you put yourself. It's how you dish out your damage. It's how you control your mana reserves. It's your accuracy of your skill shots. Really, I would love to see way more Karthus, Talia, Lilia, Fiddlesticks typed mages in the jungle. Why do you think I love playing Zyra jungle? I can make it work and I enjoy it. Morgana is something that you could throw in here as well. The difference is I'm using only champions that have a measurable pig rate. Champions that actually exist in the jungle and are not just played by crazy people like me. But as you can see, there's a lot of bleed over between the classes, but there are truly recognizable differences even if you do see some cross over certain champions. The use of mana, spells, distancing, immobile nature, and of course doing AP damage I didn't even mention that because I didn't think I had to, but yeah, mages typically are only ever AP, whereas fighters can be both, tanks can be both, but marksmen on the other hand, these are 100% AD doers because the auto attacks are physical damage. And yeah, that's not a mistake, there is only two, and don't come at me with your weird ass picks, I'm talking about jungle picks that have measurable data that are actually designed and played for the jungle, as I just mentioned, because I know some of you clowns, you're trolls, you're gonna do it. Your silver jungle, that's not a thing, but typically if we were to summarize these two champions, I would say high range but you know it's graves the guy is kind of short in that end however he still is ranged range champions 1v1 potential oppressive is the word because you must 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 use your range advantage much like nidalee when she goes into human form i want you in the enemy jungle making sure that melees can't gap close on you using your positioning and your mobility and now you're thinking ah oh, but therefore they must be you know strong early and maybe a little weaker late no yeah they're strong and early and they scale and they snowball and as i said they're impressive and they're very hard to deal with when they're op and that's the thing they could of course look for your three four five campers in graves case you can do whatever the hell you want on the map and i've no idea why this champion in particular is averse to being terrible i mean can we gut him and just not have graves seen for a while the champion just does absolutely everything a fighter does but he's still a marksman he has tankiness he has range he has burst he has split push, counter jungling, flow, mobility. There's basically almost no weakness to this champion. His smoke screen is absolutely crazy. And that's the thing. He's still a marksman. He is still ranged. Kindred, on the other hand, has an absolutely insane snowball kit. Probably one of the best in the game. However, if you can't use your aggressive power thing to shut down enemy junglers, to get your mark system, to gank early, to use your range component to get to that four marks, which increases your range component, you probably won't be having a lot of fun in the game. The whole summary is, though, that these two champions in the marksman role show why we only have have two. They are almost impossible to balance. They are always super, super strong just because ranged and auto attacks cannot be dodged. Champions who get caught out without a gap closer have no way to get onto them and they're just getting attacked all the while they're closing. And both Graves, Kindred, and for the sake of discussion, Human Form Nidalee can be insanely oppressive in the right matters just by having this one facet in their kit. However, with all of that comes a lot of difficulty. You have to be very good mechanically, you have to know matchups, and you have to be good at jungle pathing aggressively and successfully. And that's not always the case with a lot of people, which is why these two champions have the best success rate in higher elo. And finally, we have the supporters, or in this case, the supports of Ivan. When I've spoken about classes before, you know, I kind of say, hey, look, you've got the Shen with the shield and the ultimate. You've got the Morgana with the shield and the Nidalee with a heal. But I mean, come on, you know, we're not talking about Nidalee in terms of being a heal bot, and we're not going to talk about Morgana and Shen in terms of being junglers. They can and they could and they have, but they're not. And thus that leaves us with Ivan. And what's the goal here? I don't know. Shields. CC disruption with Daisy. You just want to play for Wincon. Doesn't matter who it is, his clear is basically archaic, unique, and random, and doesn't really serve any sort of purpose anymore. He's been weak for so long. Just find whoever the hell the carry is, gank their lane, shield them, peel them, and then hug them harder than you've hugged yourself ever in your life. Now, you could discuss the minutia and the pros and cons of Ivan's mechanics and his kid, but that's really talking about Ivan. When you're a supportive jungler, you are low econ, you do not farm very well, your ganks are kind of good and reliable, but not the best. 
The whole point of you is to keep the main carry on your team alive at all costs. So do that. And that you have a discussion on all of the classes, comparing them together, decide which one you think suits your personal playstyle better or one you would like to learn. Every single category had all the champions listed as I classified them based upon Riot's classification. If they are not listed, then they fall under the fighter class. Hopefully you can follow that. And now, if you want to understand 10 fundamentals about why junglers love and hate playing the role, but also what makes it absolutely strong for carrying and how you can do it as well, click the video in the box in your top right.